Oh my god, hey, I have just got back home from watching six. Wow, what key was I choosing there? Hold on. Never improvise these things. What am I doing? Six, six, six. Okay, pretend to act like you're surprised. Oh my god, hey, I just got home from watching six. So much better. Oh my gosh. Specifically, I was watching the brand new West End cast of Six the Musical in its new home at the Vaudeville Theatre in London. So I've posted a lot of Six content on my channel here before, by which I mean a whole bunch of Mega Sixes, but I haven't really talked about the show. This is probably going to be my first time really reviewing the show and reviewing a performance because I'm going to be letting you know what I thought of the show with its brand new West End cast. To give you some very brief context and backstory, I have seen this show somewhere in in the mid-teens number of times. I saw it for the first time in an inflatable cow at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I saw it on its first UK tour. I saw it on its subsequent UK tour. I've seen it at the arts. I've seen it at the lyric. And I've now seen it at the Vaudeville Theatre. If you've seen the show, its entire ethos is kind of about not comparing people. So I'm not gonna draw direct comparisons between the new actresses playing the queens and any previous portrayers of those roles. The beauty of the casting as well is that there's such different characters now. The performers are able to bring so much of themselves to these roles that it doesn't really invite direct comparisons anyway. And because the conceit of this show is that they are a girl band on stage, it's really important that they have a cohesive energy, a chemistry, a bond between them. So now that everyone attached to the West End production has left and an entire new cast of principal and alternate queens has come in, I am really excited. And that is why I booked tickets to go and see the first performance. If you haven't already, check out the Mega Six video that I got. It was insane. I brought a needlessly large optical zoom to a fourth row stall seat and filmed it with a camera on a tripod and you are welcome for that dedication. Also, before I get too far into this video, I must remember that I'm also doing a giveaway. That's right, if you want to learn more about the new actresses playing the Queens and Six at the Vaudeville Theatre, then you can win one of these programs that gives you all the information about the new cast. And here they all are. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning this exclusive six at the Vaudeville Theatre program for the new London cast is to make sure that you have subscribed to my channel, liked this video and comment underneath with hashtag Mickey Joe giveaway. If you'd like to be in with an extra chance of winning, head over to my Twitter and Instagram pages, both at Mickey Joe Theatre, where you can retweet and comment on some posts to get some extra entries on there as well. Full terms and conditions of that giveaway competition will be in the description of this video. Best of luck. So let's finally talk about what I thought of the show. It was another really great night at six. The energy was amazing. There were so many fans there ready to support the new queens which I thought was really just sincerely lovely because just from being fans of the show, they don't necessarily know any of these new performers, they haven't necessarily seen them in anything else before, they are just there to support the new queens because that's what it means to be a fan of this show. The girls were quite clearly visibly taken aback at various points by how much outpouring of love there was. There was a moment after No Way, I think it was, where Claudia, who plays Jane Seymour, um, kind of broke the sassy stare that they were giving to smile and kind of look around at just how much applause there was after that number. You got the sense there was a little bit of nerves going on. I mean, it's their first time doing it properly for a full West End audience, and there's a lot happening in this show. You know, they don't really get to stop. They barely get to leave the stage. They're constantly doing choreo in heels and background vocals for each other. It's quite intense when it really gets going. It was also very emotional. There was lots of tears. Claudia was sobbing through Heart of Stone and had to visibly like shake herself off after finishing it. It was just a really great night and I'm so glad I was there. So let's start talking about these queens. I want to highlight some things I liked about their performances that I think are unique to them that I hadn't noticed before. Amy de Bartolomeo, Bartolomeo, I have no idea how to pronounce her surname, but she's fierce. She is the new Catherine of Aragon. I loved her in the recording of In Pieces that came out over lockdown and just based on the other shows she's been involved in, things like Bat Out of Hell and We Will Rock You, she is a vocalist with a capital V. She is giving you fierceness as Catherine of Aragon. The whole opening monologue is hysterical, it's really funny, and then when she gets into that vocal and the way she attacks the choreography and just the way she looks with the little short hair, kind of similar to how Lauren Drew has her Aragon hair, she just looks fantastic. She is just Fierce is really the only word for it. She's just really intense, and I love that about her. Aragon has to bring so much energy to open the show the way that she does, and instill in the audience that this is gonna be full of talent, it's gonna be really great, and that each subsequent queen should win. I think the best way to enjoy Six is to think, oh, that was the best one. Oh, that was the best one. Oh, that was the best one. And Amy is giving you that right from the off. I love the way she says Maria every time she pronounces that name. She's also giving you a throwback to that studio album, End of My Life. 
at the end of No Way, which is really thrilling as well. She does some other crazy high riffs that I passed out and cannot remember, but very enjoyable. I wouldn't be surprised if she plays around with that and gives you some different versions because she can. Worth saying as well, Amy was also my favourite of the clowns in House of Holbein. I really love her House of Holbein voice and just the whole energy she brought to it, just committed wholeheartedly to the comedy of that bit. Really enjoyed that. Also her silly arrogant lines at the end when she's talking about like the dissolution of the monasteries, the fact that she is so intense plays so well into that just like serious Catherine of Aragon staunch religious vibe that is just played for laughs. I think it's really fun. Amanda Lindgreen is the new Anne Boleyn. I recently saw her in the Chichester Festival Theatre revival of South Pacific. She's really great here. I enjoy her in this role. She has a very different comedic take on it to both Millie and Courtney, which is always nice, which is always fun, which is always very refreshing. Anne Boleyn is such a popular character. I think it's very big shoes to step into, but I like how she's sort of completely reinvented the role. She still has that kind of teen girl vibe as Anne Boleyn, but it's more apathetic teen girl who doesn't really care about anything. Like she's on her phone, she's like, yeah, whatever. Ah, oh, I'm gonna get beheaded, ugh. Like it's very that. She also, and I have no idea how because this song has been farmed to death for comedic moments, she finds some other really great laugh lines in Don't Lose Your Head that I haven't thought of as being laugh lines before. She does this funny voice when she talks about soon my daddy said you should try and get ahead and she did something funny on Pope said nope. I can't remember exactly what it was, but the way she said nope made me laugh. She just has this very dry expression that really works and brings a different kind of funny to the song, which I really appreciate because we've heard it done so many times by Millie, by Courtney, by every 12 year old girl who ever went to an open mic afternoon at the theater cafe. No shade if you were that girl, but you know, there's there's a lot of you. Claudia Karayuki, veteran that she is, is the new Jane Seymour. I'm thrilled for her getting this platform on a West End stage. She has paid her dues, she has played some roles, she has done all the great shows. She has just finished touring as a diva in Priscilla Queen of the Desert, and now she is taking on the iconic song Heart of Stone in Six. Her performance of this is so good, so stirring, just so real. I've heard a lot of versions of this where the vocal is this kind of beautiful, angelic, ethereal, and her voice don't get me wrong, powerful, amazing, incredible, stunning, but just so real. She sounds just like such a mother. There's such an honesty to it. She does something really beautiful that I love on the first chorus, where rather than going, you can build me up, you can tear me down, rather than going like full Adele with it, it's softer and it's more spoken. So you can build me up, you can tear me down, and it's sort of slightly more clipped, and then she lets loose later on. Seymour's kind of fall into two categories. Some do whistle tone and some just do a crazy high belt at the end. She did not do the whistle tone, she did a belty thing instead. That's not to say this might not change for a future performance, who knows. The other little cutesy thing that she did that I really enjoyed is after the uh, everyone sees that Jane can't dance joke at the end that Berlin says, uh, she has this moment where she goes forward and says to Howard like, what are you talking about? And then Howard says, we compare each other. And then she goes, oh, and sort of gestures at the floor in a very funny way to be like, never mind, just as you were now. New Anne of Cleves is Dionne Ward Anderson. I am obsessed with Dionne Ward Anderson as Cleves. She was so, so good. Just so much energy and just so much warmth and just joy from watching her performance. The enthusiasm coming off of her when she was doing Get Down, it was just, it's often done as this very sassy song and she had plenty of sass, but just still this joy and this infectious smile and just this sheer enthusiasm and excitement. It was really, really fun to watch. I've always said that very, very good Cleves can steal the show at six and the other girls may need to watch out, otherwise she might just get away with it. From the beginning of the show, way before her number, she was just mugging and giving you comedy face every chance that she could. She did this funny like smug face thing. Something she did that I loved, rather than saying, you're right babes, listen, because that wasn't really the vibe of her cleaves when she's talking to the person sort of stage left front row side. She would just go up to them and be like, I, and then talk to them after that. I can't do it because it's, it's not my accent, but it was hysterical and she did that twice. Also that one singy bit in Get Down, you know the bit I'm talking about. Get down you dirty rascal. Better than that. My gosh, did she sing that well. <laughs> If you're only gonna have one really singy line in your song, sing it that well. Another thing I really appreciated, so often they have to hold for like this huge applause and with some of the new things in Get Down since the Broadway production changes got put into the West End version of the show, there are some more held applause moments during the show. And where normally they would just sort of stand there and wait for the applause to end, 
she was milking the applause and just like doing these gestures and just being like, I know, I know, I know. And like on her throne at the end when they're applauding, she's like, oh this, on oh, my throne, oh. And just mugging her way through it. Brilliant, hysterical, loved it, genius, inspired, perfect, amazing, incredible. So that brings me to Tsume as Catherine Howard. Now Catherine Howard always has high expectations for me. And I know I said I'm not meant to be comparing these queens to previous actresses. However, the love that I have for Amy Atkinson performance as Catherine Howard. She was always my favourite from the first time that I saw Six. I was obsessed with her. One of my favourite theatre performances of all time. I could just listen to it forever. So subconsciously Catherine Howard's always have a lot to live up to for me. I also think that that speech she has, the sassy monologue going into her song is some of the best of the show's script. I think her song is the best in the show. I think she has such great material and such great things to work with. What Samay did that I really liked is she had this build throughout it. When when she got to the first you who say I'm all you need, she head voiced it. She was not belting from the off. And we've heard a lot of Howards with voices that are just sort of pingy and can be there without having to like crazy belt it. And hers is slightly different where she was giving you softer on that. But by the time that she was doing that for the last time, she had built and built and built and it was getting more and more of a belt. The last one, very powerful, very strong. It's been quite common as well for Howard to sort of do the whole number quite sarcastically and sardonically, like, ugh, like she sort of knows from the beginning that it's going to go badly, even though she plays that surprise during the song. So May plays it very innocently at the beginning and it's quite filled with anguish at the end. Obviously the live version of the song very different to the studio cast recording. If you've seen the live show, it gets very emotional at the end. I've never seen it this emotional. I've never heard anyone put quite as much sort of cry tone in that last little line of the only thing you want to do is uh, like normally they let out an anguish noise right at the end but fully just like making it sound as though she was sobbing in the last line I'm not sure if that was her being emotional from the first night it felt as though it was just an acting choice which I thought was inspired which brings us to Misha Turner as Catherine Parr I really enjoyed Misha I particularly enjoyed Misha in the little section of the script before her number I think bits of the Catherine Parr section can sometimes feel a little bit cringy to me with some of the rewrites to it where she's like getting nervous about what they're talking about saying like should we really be doing this I think Misha struck a really good balance of still being strong as a character without sort of going completely whimpery while still arguing with the other queens and saying, oh, is this the right thing to be doing? I really enjoyed her comedy moments at the beginning. I think Catherine Parr has some of the best early comedy in the show where she has the lines like, the winning contestant is the most protestant. And just like the physicality she was giving with her comedy. To be able to look that fierce and be like fierce queen diva, but also willing to play it as a clown is something I really respect from a West End performer. Then we get into her, I don't need your love beautiful vocal tone, the placement of it, delicious, lovely. She looked stunning while she was singing as well. I mean, they all do. They all look phenomenal. They have the new costumes. They look amazing. I was close enough to see that the eye makeup is on point. I love all of the hair choices they currently have going on. Just brilliant. Misha's I Don't Need Your Love reprise riffs were also completely different to anyone that I've heard before, which I always find exciting. I love new vocal choices. She didn't even do the I don't need your love. She didn't do the whole climbing arpeggio riff scale moment. She did something different to that, which I appreciated. But again, lots to enjoy in her performance. Just another brilliant interpretation of this character. I really can't fault any of them, to be perfectly honest. There were comedy moments that I thought, oh, that normally gets more of a laugh, but then there were just as many comedy moments that I thought, oh, I wasn't actually expecting something from that. I was so struck by how different so many of the line readings were, whether they've made a conscious choice to try and separate it, to try and really reinvent parts of the show. It feels very fresh, very new, very exciting. Everyone who has already seen the show now needs to go back and see it with this cast to see how different it all is and to find a new favourite queen for yourselves or to love all of them equally because they are all brilliant. If you have seen this cast already and been particularly fast like me, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. If you're planning to go and see this cast, let me know that as well, just because I'm curious and I'm, I'm nosy and I like to know these things. Make sure you support the new reigning queens at Sixth Musical at the Vaudeville Theatre. It remains a brilliant show. They are brilliant talents and I cannot wait for this fan base to fall in love with them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to enter my giveaway to win your own exclusive Six at the Vaudeville Theatre program. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more content about Six, as well as all of your other favourite musical theatre shows. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh.
Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe!